Hey, is this on? Nope. Hit right. the mute button. Check. Hit the mute button. Oh, the mute button there. Stupid mute button. <clears throat> so, I'd like to thank everybody coming first off. And uh, say I'm not, I'm not a soloist. I'm not a uh, solo artist. I'm a band guy, and I've always been a band guy. So uh, what I've opted to do is play along the tracks that I've recorded in the last 30 years that I've been doing this. I'm wicked old. <laughs> Something that, oh, oh, put me back on the one. But yeah, man. Uh, but, you know, with, with God's Map, what we do is tempo map. And that, see, because, like, again, I'll go back to that thing I said about pushing and pulling Black Sabbath, you know. I think especially in rock and metal, you know, you, you can't be a machine, man, you know. They'll never replace us guys and this thing in front of me with a machine as long as there's metal and hard rock because, you know, we, it's a feel thing. And so, but with that said, the way recording goes and having to layer everything and do, you know, five guitar tracks and all this stuff to make a record sound huge, you know, you kind of have to record with a click. So what we'll do is what's called tempo mapping and, like, we'll get... We'll get the verse like at the perfect, what we feel is the perfect groove, and then we'll have the engineer or producer, whoever's there with us, tap it out to get the right, say it's 98 BPM, right? And then once we get that, all right, we got the groove. That's where the groove should be. Then we'll go to the bridge or the chorus, say. So then we'll play the chorus and, and so sort we'll of sing along, and we'll get it to where it's perfect, not caring what the verse was at, right? And then say it's, it's usually a little slower for some reason, the choruses, than, than the verse. So say the verse was at 98, then the, the chorus jumped all the way down to 95, say. And then, so we'll tempo map. So we set the, temp, the, the click track to 98 during the verse, and then at the very last two beats of the verse, go 97, 96, and then bang, 95. So as I'm playing along, I know it's going to slow down a little bit. So I'll start the slow down a little bit before the click. And then we tempo map it, and then the same thing, back up for the bridge or the, or the verse. Wow. And, you know, you can't tell with the human ear, no. as long as the drummer's doing it right, you know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, it doesn't just jump. You, you have to just know it's coming and mellow into it, and then know it's coming at the end and speed up to it without it being noticeable. And then you're still creating that non-machine human element of push and pull in, in metal and rock that John Bonham, Bill Ward did so well, you know. And from pretty much every one of us in this room has to give it up for John Bonham, right? Oh, yeah. 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 Even us guitar players. Yeah. <laughs> he was pretty good, too, yeah, right? he's a guitar player. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. He was pretty good, Jimmy yeah, Cage. Yeah. And Tony Iommi. Uh, you know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I played with Black Sabbath, and uh, I made one mistake in the Ozzy set. and Because uh, Ozzy opened for Sabbath, and I got the opportunity. I got the call. I'm friends with Robert Trujillo, who was Ozzy's bass player at the time. And so I got the call, and so I played with Sabbath and, and, and Ozzy. And in the Ozzy set, here it goes, I don't want to change the world. I don't want the world to change me. And the end goes, did a little, did a little, bear bow. And that's the end of the song. But it was a double chorus. So I go, don't want to change the world. I don't want the world to change me. I went, did a little, did a little, bear bow. Don't want to change. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, then, so like, bow, bow, oh. don't want to change. And I came back in and, and Ozzy turned around and I'm like, oh shit. Oh, no. So then at the end of the song, you know, I mean, that was one of the easy songs. So I was just so mad at myself. You know, so I, at the end of the song, I just stood up with my sticks. And I took them and I just, damn it, I just tossed my sticks at the backdrop, you know. And I turned around, you know, I'm mad at myself. And there's Ozzy Osbourne standing there. He goes, it's all right, man. And then he pulls his pants down. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, all right. I guess it's all right. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? <laughs>
And then I work my way up to where when the band sees me, yes, I look like that, even in the rehearsal place. You know, probably not as intense, you know. Yeah. Uh, but is the band levels as far as sound go, is it that loud or do you guys contain yeah. it? <laughs> is it? <laughs> wow. Yeah, man. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank you. Yeah. I love it. I feel the songs, you know. That's, yeah. that's what made, drives me. Yeah. People say, man, you know, where do you get the energy or why do you... Yeah, you feel it, man. <laughs> I feel the songs and I try and know the lyrics, you know, and yeah, get right into on. that headspace, that head frame. Yeah. You know? It shows. It's awesome. <laughs> I'd say, yeah, you know, about the Dave Leckel thing. Dave Leckel, obviously one of the greatest drummers ever, one of my favorite drummers. But, you know, I, I was so worried. I resisted for the longest time of coming and doing these kind of clinic things because I felt, you know, I'm just, I'm a band guy, I'm a rock guy, I'm a metal guy. But do I have those kind of skills? I don't, you know. I could have, but I chose to take my time and energy and put it towards my bands and right. songwriting and stuff, you know. But uh, that's why I try and point that out. So I appreciate you bringing you bringing that to people's attention because it's all that's what all I'm about the feel and the energy and trying to portray the love of drums you know speaking of I haven't even plugged Yamaha yet these drums are fantastic and I'm not saying that just because they give them to me I mean, I mean this kick drum I, I pulled this kick drum it's the new Live Oak Customs Live Oak Customs yeah? yeah and uh I pulled it right out of the box and man nothing no foam I, I put a little foam in it because it makes you know, the head the head feels a little tighter uh, for the for the 16. Uh, but uh, even without it, that's the best. I played for 30 over 30 years now, and I played Pearl, I played Ludwig, I played Tama, I played DW, I played Premier. Uh, probably the only one I haven't played is Grash, but uh, these things kill anything I ever had. And I mean, I still have most of my drum in the garage. You put it right beside this, and they kill them. So I'm telling y'all. These new hoops are badass. <laughs> right on. <laughs> and I, I, I told Greg, I'm like, dude, I swear to you, even if you didn't give me three drums, I would buy them. And he's like, oh, cool, and then you can buy the next kit. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference between these and the old oak customs, the live custom and the old oaks? The old oaks? Well, I think there's two more ply on these. And I have the old oaks, and we did the Oracle, the last record, with those oak drums. And it was actually Sully's kit that we used, because uh, my kit was in storage in Boston, his were in L.A. So we had the same kits, the oaks, the last oaks. And, you know, I knew right away, and I have birch ones, I have maples, you know. And after the last oaks, I thought, for, especially for heavy music and rock, heavy rock or metal, man, the last one's... Uh, I liked even better. Of course, on the last tour, I, I ended up bringing my maples out there. They just all the Yamaha drums sound great, but as far as I'm concerned, these these new oaks with the eight ply, best thing I've ever heard, man. I mean, I, I'm deaf, but <laughs> man, they, 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 the feel too. Oh, that's what I want to tell y'all. Like when I first joined Godsmack, you know, and I was told, yeah, dude, you got the gig. As long as you can get along with Tony and Robbie, it's not an audition. You get along with those guys, you're in the band, right? So I'm like, oh, cool. So and I get along with everybody, so uh, except for a Premier. <laughs> anyway, here's the story. So, so I bring my I'm with Premier at the time, and I bring my Premier drums to Boston, and I set them up. Man, I can't believe that that baby better have head ear, ear plugs in, man. I'm gonna drive it deaf. <laughs> but uh, check this out. So I bring the drums, my, my brand new premieres out of the box to Boston, right? And I set them up and sell these kids. Sully, our singer, is a drummer also. If you guys know us, you know that. And uh, so he had his Yamaha set up in there. So I bring my kit and I set it up right in front of his. And, you know, he, uh, naturally he gets on the kit, he plays it, and he goes, dude, just play my Yamahas, you know? And I loved my new premieres right out of the box. They were so rad. And they're great drums. And, but I get on the Yamahas and it's just a, a thousand percent different night and day. The feel of the kick drum, the sound of the toms, everything was just like way better than my brand new premieres, you know. And so, and the odd thing is, you know, uh, you know, I just got this gig with this million selling band or whatever. And then I called, I called Premier and said, yeah, you know, I, I, I'm going to send these drums back. I'm going to go with Yamaha. And the dude, they, would, they hate me to this day. <laughs> you know? And I was like, dude, sorry. You know, he's like, oh, you'll see. 
you know, you go into the big corporate company and send those drums back. And then the drum set that I had before that I toured the world for two years with, which was beat all the shit because I was in a punk band, amen. And he said, and send those drums back too. I go, dude, they, they're destroyed. I, go, I don't care. We're not some big corporation. You'll see. And then here it is 10 years later, and Yamaha's the coolest dudes I ever worked with. So yeah. Yeah, I blew that theory. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, oh, that's also killed, killed two birds with one stone. That's also how the double drum solo that we do in Godsmack came about. Because, you know, I, we had two drum kits, two drummers. You put two drum kits facing each other in a room, and then, you know, First thing he told, he's like, yeah, create some kind of loop, and I want to do some kind of fills over it. So I said. Anyway. Yeah. That's cool, everybody. That's so cool. Huh? And he started filling over it, and then 10 years later, that's the same solo. So for any guys back fans, we're, we're going to make a new record next month. We're going to start writing. Yeah. And, uh, and with... You know, with the intent also to write a new solo, finally. You know? And we've tried many times, and every time we try to write a new solo, it's not as good, you know? And then we go, damn, that, the other one's still better, man. You know, so we always go back to it. But we're gonna, if it, if it kills us, we're going to write a new drum solo. That's, that's great. Can't wait. Uh, for the Wrath Trial? Trial tracks you were playing, were those also to a click or was that just going along with the track? Rathal stuff? Yeah. Yeah, no click. That's impressive. Back then, well, thanks, man. Thank you. Because you're following something recorded in the 80s, like the time. Well, happened. thank you. And I tell you, it's, it's, it was, it's hard to follow. Like, I, it's easier to play with the band than to play along with tracks, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, yeah, exactly. if you guys notice today, which happened. <laughs> <laughs> Look, these, these are just, well, that's because I'm coming from downtown and I'm not really so worried about precision. I, I'm going to kill these things, you know, when I'm in that, that mode. And I sat, had the opportunity, the pleasure, the honor of sitting behind Neil Peart's kit. And on his toms, it's a three inch diameter on every single head. <laughs> Six, eight, ten, twelve, four, every one, man. There's no stray hits. And the, the precision is just amazing on that. But uh, so Neil probably has never hit himself with a stick. And he doesn't know what the, what the ringing in the ear means, you know. But uh, yeah, I'll clip my ear sometimes. It's real painful. And uh, I, one time on the, on the last, we just got off a little tour we just did. And, uh, and I, I was coming with this one. When do I do this move where you know, I'm playing back and forth like this one, you know. <laughs> I came down like this to hit the snare and totally wailed my kneecap. Oh. And, I was, and I was, it was in the Oracle where I, you know, I'm playing this beat, you know. And I went, blah! And I was like, oh! And I looked at my drum tag and, I was, and he didn't know what happened. He's going, and I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do here. You know, in my whole image, that was painful. But, uh, you know, I tell you, that, that shit sucks when that happens. But what's cool is when you, like, wail a rim or a cymbal and blood starts flying everywhere and then you're like, yes! <laughs> anyway, I think shit happens, it happens and once it, if it happens and it's cool then I'll go, wow, that was cool. Yeah. Like I do this one thing and I stand alone and I, it's like, you know, I can't even do it right now, but I, when I'm, I'm swelling on this and I'll just balance that. It was something that I just was circus circus animal in one night, I guess, you know. I got it. I was hot. You know, you get shit hot sometimes where you, can, you can't really do anything wrong behind the kit. Yeah. There's those nights where you're just like, yeah. what? And you didn't drink too much the night before or whatever. And you just feel like you can take on the world. And yeah. stuff will happen and I'll just do stuff. Ah. And then I'll try it the next night and I'm like, no. Yeah, okay. <laughs> sometimes the balance is just there, you know. I feel like I could... Uh, or something. <laughs> yeah. Circus animal. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. But um, so anyway, that's uh, any more questions? Can you talk about your tuning 
Sounds like your batter head's tuned pretty tight on the kick. And as yeah, far as top said, to bottom, is it the same or one higher than the other? It is. You know, I let Greg do it for me this time. And, and my tech, believe this, I've had my same drum tech for 17 years. Oh, wow. And so I hope I even remember how to tune drums, man. But no, I, you know, when I get, like when I pull these out of the box, I put the head on and I basically just go by feel and then I put the, the, the pedals on and I hit them. If I can get a nice quad going, then I know I'm about right. And then I just go by sound. And typically, if you put the put the head on, you know, which is best to be the kick drum, screw it in by finger until it's finger tight, you know, and then take take your key and do some quad. Try and get it to feel right. And then uh, usually it's just one lug that you can move to get it in tune. I mean, that's my method. Same thing with the toms. I finger tighten them as tight as I can get them. And then I... I Sometimes you can uh, you can use one stick and press it in the center of the head, and it, it for my deaf ears it lets me hear the tone a little better. Yeah. So like you know rather than going, I'll put it press it like this. So you can tell that was a little higher, right? Not in tune. Back up after you. Yeah, after I beat them too. They, so are their bottom heads tighter than the batter heads? Yeah, they are. They are, yeah. About a half step. Just, just a little bit, right? Yeah. Just a little bit. A little bit. But, uh, and it depends. Like, you know, I used to do this thing where you could take all the, the uh, hardware off the shell when you get a new kit and get your bass player or your guitar player to sit with you. And you can actually get the natural tone of the shell, you know, if you want to go that hardcore into it. And then, you know, you can pretty much tune it to, they'll give you a note, and you know where the sweet spot of the drum is. But with these, with these Yamaha's, man, you don't even have to do that. You take them out of the box, basically make sure that, I usually, I usually tune the heads the same, and then I'll go down on the bottom head to get the sweet spot. But, uh, but some people, like Greg, uh, he'll tune it a little lower or higher on the bottom head. Usually lower gets more tone out of it. Some jazz guys, I think, will tune the bottom head up a little bit. But uh, in any event, usually if there's a ring and you're in a club situation or something and it's going boom, and the sound man's going, what the F, dude, you know? You can just take one lug, hit it on the bottom, get one lug, and you can just doom, 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 and tune it right out like that. Giveaways? Yeah. Just a giveaway. Yeah, that's a tough away, man. Yeah.